Good morning, everyone. My name is Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship World and International. Today's sermon is from the first epistle. Amen. It is from the first epistle of Through the Grace of God, the Corinthians, which I'm really excited to share with you today. But there has been a lot going on in our nation since the beginning of this year. Amen. This is what I would like to address with you before we go into before we go into today's uh, sermon. Amen. Of uh, the first epistle to the Corinthians of the the greatest of these is love. Amen. By your very own Dr. Diana Bergman. We all need to raise our hands. To touch the hem of the Lord's garment in prayer over every school system and over every department in that White House of our nation. Through the grace of God. Because our children, lives are at stake. They have lives to live after we are gone. And we are here to make sure of that as we raise our hands to touch the hem of the Lord's garment. There has been 20 to 25, I guess. I don't remember how much, but it's a high stake since January of shootings in school systems. Amen. And we are to raise our hands to touch the hem of the Lord's garment. Through the grace of God. So Satan will stop coming in to steal, kill, and destroy our children. Amen. And let's move every mountain from this nation's capital. Most of the time you hear the news and they're more focused on guns. And about uh, also about bringing in guns so they could heal this situation. I ah, hello. That is the main situation is guns. Is shootings, is killings through the grace of God. Let us all raise our hands. Amen. Touch the hem of the Lord's garment over our children. Place this hedge of protection, this wall of fire wrapped around all of our children of all ages. Amen. Of all ages. That's all you hear about anymore. It's just about children's lives are at stake from the school shootings. Or, or about this at the school. Or about that at the school. Through the grace of God. So let us raise our hands. For a, a hedge of protection. Wrapped around every child of our nation. Amen. Stop focusing on this or about that, about guns or about this or, or oh no, that they're going to take it away or blah, 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 about gun systems. Start focusing on children. And if you don't have any children today, start thinking and focusing, wow, that could be my child. That could be my grandchild. That could be my great grandchild. We need to raise our hands. We need to touch the hem of our Savior's garment. And we need to stand firm over the Word of God. And we need to pray over a big, mighty hedge of protection wrapped around each and every child of the Lord our King. Amen. And also today, let us also remember to today... To pray for every health needs of everyone. Let us pray also for every well-being. Let us pray for the, the, the salvation for everyone to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray for everyone with chronic issues, chronic battles within their body for complete healing by Gilead. Amen. Let us place a hedge of protection wrapped around every leader, 
of every ministry, including the needs of Jesus' Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, and all of their families, all of their loved ones, for health, for healing. Amen? Let us pray also that we listen to our heart today and our inner soul man program will open up to the word so that we may feed freely upon today's message and we will drink freely from the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We want to welcome all of the national, all of the international fellowship members and visitors around the globe. Amen. As you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's word. May the Lord richly bless you today around the globe. I'm Senior Patora, Dr. Dina Prevana, Jesus is Lord Fellowship, Worldwide International. Let us prepare ourselves and open up your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. The first epistle to the Corinthians, the greatest of these is love, by your very own Dr. Diana Prevon. Welcome everyone to Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Prevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Now, let us open up the Bibles to the greatest love chapter of, of them all, 1 Corinthians 13. Amen. In his discourse on spiritual gifts, Paul, he praised the value of love. Paul praised the value of love, introducing it to a more excellent way. In that 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 33 states, But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet, Show I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. Emphasizing its necessity along with any abilities or any service that we might have. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 3 states, I speak in tongues of man or of angels, but do not have love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body, to hardship that I may boast but do not have love I gain nothing explaining its abounding superiority over spiritual gifts 1 Corinthians 13 8 charity never faileth but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. It shall vanish away. Amen. They, he even praised its value over faith and hope. Abiding virtues in of themselves. Amen. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen. Yet love is the greatest of these virtues. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Why is love so highly valued by Paul? And if it's such a great virtue, how should we manifest it in our lives? Amen. These gifts and these questions that I wish to address here today in today's sermon, teaching amen first is by summarizing i want to summarize this chapter to you amen the greatness of love 
The greatness of love. A. Love is motivated. God to save us. Love motivated. God to save us. Amen. Out of love, folks, for the world, God gave his son. His son. That's John chapter 3, 16 to 17. Amen. And also 1 John. Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 John 4, 9 to 10. And 1 John 4, 9 to 10 speaks. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, folks. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. John three sixteen to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world, but to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. Number two, that I wanted to emphasize here with you, the magnitude of God's love is seen when we consider that it was expressed while we were yet sinners. Amen. And it speaks this in Romans chapter 5, 6 to 8. Christ in our place, for when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die. But yet perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love motivated Christ, folks, to die for us. To die for us. That's what love motivated Christ. To die for us. Amen. The Father's love towards the Son motivated the Son to, to love us. To love us. Oh, how awesome is that. John 15 verse 9. It speaks love and joy perfected. As the Father loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. Such love then it motivated Christ to die for us, folks. Amen. In John 15, 13, it speaks, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. And we walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Love motivates us to live for Christ. Amen. The love of Christ, it compelled Paul to live for him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. Are you ready? Let's read uh, 14 and 15. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Amen. Paul's Life of faith was thus influenced by Christ's love for, for him, for him. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ Jesus lives in me. 
and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Love motivates us to love one another. The love of Christ, it should inspire us to love one another. John 13, verses 34, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. The love of God should be likewise. Move us to love one another. 1 John chapter 4, 11, it reads, Beloved, if God is so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen? Love can and should be a very powerful motivating force in our lives. We have seen how it prompted God and Christ to express their love for us. The greatness of love can also be seen in how we should express it in our lives. Amen? How we should express it in our lives. The expression of love towards God and Christ by keeping the commandments of God and Christ. John chapter 14, 15 speaks. Jesus promises another helper. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 15 verse 14. You are my friends. And if you do whatever I command you. He who is my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Folks, by loving our brethren in Christ. Amen. Turn with me to John 15, 12 and let us read. Amen. Let us read. This is my commandment that you love one as I have loved you. 1 John 4 verses 20 to 21. It speaks obedience by faith. If someone loves, says that I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. He is a purebred liar. For he who does not love his brother nor sisters who he has seen, how can he love God who is not seen? And this commandment we have from him. That he who loves God must also love his brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus also. Also, there is not one person upon this earth that we should not feel the love for. Great is God's love towards us. Shall we not love God with great real in return? Amen. With great zeal in return. Great is God's love, folks. I want to repeat that one more time. Great is God's love towards us. Shall we not love God with great zeal in return? Should we? Towards our brethren. By helping them when they're in a physical need. And then in 1 John 3, 16 to 18. The outwording of love. By this that we know love. Because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods. And sees his brothers in, in need. And shuts up his heart. From him? How does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but indeed in truth. You are to show the love 
of Christ with every expression of his word. Not of the way how the world is, but the way of Christ's love through you. Amen? Providing as we need ability, as we have the ability and the opportunity. Loving them in deed and in truth, saith the Lord. By helping them when they're in spiritual needs. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. James 5, bring back the erring one. Amen. Verse 19, brethren, if anyone among you wanders away from my truth, from my word, and someone turns his back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Amen. Bringing them back to the Lord. That is our job. If anybody separates themselves from Christ, it is our job to bring them back. And more fervent than any time before. Because today could be their last day in life. Today could be their last day. Loving them with a truly fervent love. Amen. By setting the example in loving God and keeping His. Amen. By keeping the Lord's example. Amen. And by keeping His commandments. 1 John 5, 2. It speaks by this. We know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep His commandments. That's how we love. We keep the Word of God within our hearts. His commandments. His promises. We focus on the Word of God every brand new day. Amen. And if we truly love one another, we will encourage them by providing a good example. Don't provide a yucky example. Provide a good example that you love. Your love, Christ's love, who is within you. Amen? Only then can we really know that, that we love the children of God. If you're going to continue to be selfish-willed and continue to speak complaining about another person, and speak negative and, and speaking in a spirit of depression of your mind wandering to and fro but not in the spirit of love that is not the love of Christ that is not being a Christian amen does our example express a proper measure of love towards brethren does it Towards our enemies. Amen. Remember that God loved us while we were still enemies. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verses 6 to 10. And it states, For when we were still without strength of Christ within us, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. But yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, than having now been justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Some more, some more and some more. Having been reconciled, we shall be have saved 
by his life. Amen, folks? We should have been saved by his life while we were still ungodly. While we were still ungodly, we should have been saved by his life. While we were sinners, as children of God, we are to be like our heavenly Father at all times. We are to be like our heavenly Father God. We are to speak his words out of our mouth. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, 44. All the way to chapter, uh, to verse 48. Are you ready? Folks. Amen. Let us read. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil ones and on the good. And sends rain on just and, and, and the unjust people. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same thing. And if you greet your brethren, only what, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen? Loving our enemies. Blessing those who curse us. Doing good to those who hate us. Praying for those who spitefully use us and persecute us and, and puts us down at all times. Just as Jesus and Stefan did towards their persecutors. Amen. Luke chapter 23. Let's go into Luke chapter 23. Let's start at 34. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is a scripture that must be out of you at all times in prayer. No matter how man persecutes you, you are to have the heart of Christ. Father, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is the main scripture prayer that has to come from your heart. The Lord sees your heart, how you love. If they got an imaginary brain that does not love through the grace of God, the Lord sees your heart. The Lord knows your heart, who is love. Amen. And who loves. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go into Acts chapter 7, verse 60. Are you ready? Let's read. Then he knelt down. Then he knelt down and he cried out aloud. Amen. With a loud voice. Lord, do not charge them with their sins. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. And they divided his garments and they cast out lots. Loving the unlovable and the ungrateful people is the highest expression of love that you are giving to the Lord your God. As you love those who are unlovable. Amen. The Lord sees your hearts. The Lord knows your heart. Through the grace of God. There are so many families that are remarried. That a part of them, they don't realize who they're married to. Who their families are, are have their own family at. They still 
still continue to contradict their family, but yet, hey, hello. No matter which way they turn, that family member is still a part of your body. Through the grace of God and through that family member who's a part of your body, that family, through the grace of God, is still a part of your body because through the grace of God, through the grace of God, what? You are one with your partner. So anybody outside of your body who is the family of birth through the grace of God, whether they love or don't love, the Lord sees their hearts. The Lord sees their hearts. They will either live in a spirit of condemnation or they will receive the spirit of love, power, to sell mind. You know, I just pray that today that everyone shall love just as Christ Jesus loved. Not continue to condemn another, but to love just as Christ Jesus loves. Because that's totally ridiculous. That's totally ridiculous to live in a world of sin, but yet tell people and to show people, oh, I'm a Christian. But then people start seeing their hearts, seeing the way how they react, seeing the way how they talk amongst others. Or maybe that's a partner that's out there that's condemning their own body and halting their own prayer life. And then they wonder, why is God not answering my prayers? It's, what are you doing in your life? Are you having the spirit of love, power, and sound mind within you at all times? Or are you loving less? Are you loving less? Today's, let's go into the last part, into today's conclusion. Amen. Let us conclude today's service. The Apostle Paul had expressed the greatness of love, of God's love. Amen. In his own conversation, amen. In his own conversion. You know, there's so many families that's out there. That that their families that the Lord gave them in marriage. There are so many families that breaks apart because of families of birth. Praise God, my family of my side of my body is not like that. I praise God, many others are not like that. Because through the grace of God, that's the saddest part in the whole world to live by. Especially to condemn your own, your own body. To condemn your own prayer life. Your own prayer walk. It's sad. It's just so, so sad. And we need to pray for, for people just as this. So they don't leave this earth and fall asleep until the Lord wakes them up in their eternal home. I pray that they will love just as Christ Jesus loved before they leave this earth and not have no spirit of hate. Not have no spirit of jealousy. Hey, my brother or my sister, through the grace of God, is having a great, a, 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 a great marriage, and I'm not married, so blah, 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 let's destroy their marriage. There's a lot of that going on in our nation. In this last of days, and that is so sad. Instead of loving each other, just as Christ Jesus loves us, that's our Savior's main that's our Savior's main wording that we are to do. Main instructions is the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Amen? And, and I just, we just spoke about it together in all of the scriptures today. 
What's the sense of wasting each and every part of your moments in life to condemn your eternal home? It doesn't make no sense at all to live in a spirit of hate. I wouldn't want that in my life at all. I don't want no spirit of hate. I am here to love. I am here to spread God's love throughout all of our family. Every portion of the Lord's tree of life that the Lord has given a part of my husband and my life is to, to spread out the spirit of love. Power in a cell mind within us, within our family, within our vine, within our children's vine, within our, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. We are here to spread the spirit of love, power to some mind, not hate, not to show anybody else negativeness or depression or, or any other kind of acts that does not belong to Christ's love. That does not belong to Christ's love. Amen? Okay. In today's conclusion of today's sermon, the Apostle Paul, he had expressed the greatness of God's love in his own conversion for which he was so thankful for in 1 Timothy 1.12. Glory to God for his grace. And I thank Christ Jesus for our love. Who has enabled me because he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry although I was formerly a blasphemer a persecutor an isolate man but I obtained mercy because did it ignorantly in unbelief verse 14 and the grace of our Lord has exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Verse 15, then is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save the sinners of whom I am chief. However, this reason I obtain mercy and in the first Jesus Christ, in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are loving to believe on him in everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. First Timothy chapter one, verses 12, all the way to verse 16. Amen, folks. We are to love because Christ first loved us. Especially as crucified Christians who walks by faith and not by sight of the Lord's word. We are to love. Not to show anybody hate. Amen. It is written. It is written. It is written. Amen. It is written. And those who fears and, and feels less about you, we are to pray for them. Pray for their souls. Pray that they will be transformed by the renewing of their minds, that they will have the spirit of love and separate and break every chain of any kind of spirit of depression or any kind of spirit that is less than them for who they are supposed to be in Christ. Amen, folks. Amen. We too have experienced the greatness of God's love, folks, in our own conversion, which we are so thankful for, in our daily living, folks, as we're presuming that, that we're walking in love. Amen? Love is indeed the greatest virtue, folks. When we properly understood it and, and manifested in our lives. Amen. It serves as the basis for our faith and all of our hope. Amen. And now abide faith, hope, 
love. These three things. But the greatest of these is what? The greatest of these is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide hope, faith, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Have you responded to the love of God today by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ? What are you obeying the gospel by today? Amen? Are you walking in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us? Are you walking in that direction? What did the Lord speak to you today about any sermon of the Lord that the Lord had placed in your life, in your heart, that 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 sermon of whoever will plant that seed in your heart of the spirit of, of the Lord's love that the Lord is speaking to you through? And then, are you walking in love just as Christ has loved us and, and, and given himself for us? What did today's devotions of Dr. Deanna Brevon, of Deacon Matthew, or of Rosemary, uh, of Rosemary as Rosemary speaks today's prayers, what did that speak through to you? What seed time and harvest harvested through you? And if the Lord is speaking to you through Charles Staley, through, through any other ministers that are named, Amen. By anyone. What did their what did the word of God that the Lord led them to speak to your hearts? How the Lord is speaking to your heart through them. What did that speak through to you? How are you walking in life today because of that living word? What memos or, or what notes that you have received today? And then what memos, what notes are you continuing to speak and look back on and add on to your, to your, uh, to your notes and your Bible teaching? There's no excuse because this fulano or that fulano next to you did something to you that stopped you. No, your body is the Lord's living church of the Holy Spirit. It is you who is going home to either heaven or hell, wherever you are going to wake up at as the Lord places you to your eternal sleep here. Because at that very moment, that very time, it's all about between you and Christ. The same thing is right now, right here, and right on this very day that you are receiving the love of Christ through his word. Amen. And the people, every brother and sister in Christ Jesus, will see the Lord's light shine through you. Everyone will see the Lord's light shine through you. Amen. Have you responded to the love of God by obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ? Have you responded to the love of God by obeying the gospel? Amen? Are you walking in love just as Christ Jesus has loved us and giving himself for us? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. Walk in love just as Christ Jesus also has loved us and given himself for us just as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. Amen. My name, folks, is Sina Patora, Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, where Jesus is Lord. Please send us in your prayer request needs, your celebration of praises so we could celebrate with you. Uh, send us in your birthdays and much, much more. Um, for those who would like to study the Word of God, and study wherever you are comfortable at or even in a group setting with the people that you love and you would like 
to for each of you to receive a certification at the end of the year and also a GPA grades, please contact us. Amen. We will get you started ASAP. We will send you out the attachments. Amen. Would you like to do it in your own homes or, or whatever else? Contact us. Amen. We will send you out the attachments or or make every um, arrangement possible in order for you to study the living word of God. Amen. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Brevon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, where Jesus is Lord. Folks, today's tithe and offerings, we ask for those here who are not.